Welcome to Valley Mobile Automotive. We're doing a quick front brake job on a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, not too bad. There's a few tricks, uh, tips that'll make this job run a little smoother. Uh, so follow along. Let's get to it. Jack the vehicle up, put on jack stands, and we'll pull this tire off. So now we want to turn the wheel out so we can get to these back bolts. Before we pull the caliper off, we'll take a little pry bar or a long screwdriver, put it in between the rotor and the caliper, and we'll pull this whole thing over as far as it'll go. By pulling it all the way over, I found you don't have to push the pistons in with the caliper off because this pushed the pistons in as far as they need to go already. Now we'll pull the whole caliper bracket off as an assembly to change the rotor. This vehicle is getting pads and rotors. The bracket bolts are a 21 millimeter. If you're just doing pads, you can skip this step. And hang the whole assembly up. You don't want it to fall or pull on this wheel speed sensor wiring. So I thought this was a pretty cool invention. To pull the rotor off, there's a little O-ring around the outside. And that just holds it in place during assembly. I really like that idea. The rotor comes off. You may have to pound on it uh, to get it to break free. This one came off pretty easy. New rotors come with a protective coating from the factory that we want to take off. So just get some brake clean and a rag. Once your rotor's clean, we can slap it on. Before putting our rotor on, we want to prep the hub surface. Now this one was nice and clean. Sometimes they can get a little uh, rusty, so we just want to break off any rust, clean it up real good, and then we can put a rust inhibitor on here. Anti-seize can work, just putting it around, trying not to get it on your wheel stud or your rotor, or I use fluid film. Either one works, just some kind of rust inhibitor, so these rotors, five, six, seven years down the road, can come back off. Put a rotor on for reusing the o-ring put that back on and it's just nice it holds it in place now we can put our caliper assembly back on figure out where my bolts are we'll torque those down last so now we're going to replace the pads it can be a little tricky to pull this hardware off it's just a little retaining bracket so they give you a little notch if you put a pry bar or a long screwdriver in it and push towards the rotor it wants to bend then you could take another long screwdriver or pry bar put it in between the prong and push out and that's all there is to it a lot of times your brakes will come with a new clip uh, you can reuse this one or use the clip that came with the brakes so now to get access to the caliper bolts they're just caps over the bolts we could push them off with a screwdriver that's just what the caps look like. There's two of them, one on top, one on the bottom. And it's an 11 millimeter Allen or a 7 16 Allen. This is a 7 16 It's a little tight in there, uh, but it fits. So perfect. Don't let your caliper drop. Pull it out and then up and over. Now the bracket here, we'll just want to clean up the best we can. They're usually not too bad, depending on where you live. So this outside pad goes on the caliper bracket first. Then we'll pull this one off. It's just held in by these little springs. And we'll put the new one in. Sometimes aftermarket pads, these springs will be spread too wide and it's hard to push in. It's okay to take a pair of pliers and squeeze them in just a little. There we go. We'll clean off the caliper itself, just where the pad rides. Again, usually they're not too bad. Then in these slide pin holes, we'll take some silicone paste and lube them up. 
Now we're ready to install. According to the information I have, the caliper bolts that we just put in are torqued to 41 foot-pounds. Put the caps back on. Our caliper bracket bolts are torqued to 148 foot-pounds. That's about as much as I weigh. So putting this on is much easier than taking it off. Put the ends on first. So the two ends are on. And then the middle, you just want to push down and it locks in. And that's it. Now I'm going to go inside, push on the brakes to pump this back up, make sure this is in one more time, and then put the tire on. So this bottom could go in a little further. There we go. All right, that's it. So we'll straighten the wheel out, put the tire back on, and take it for a spin. If this is the first side you've done, go to the other side, do the exact same thing, uh, and you're all set. All right, there you go. That's front brakes on a 15 Grand Cherokee. Not too bad. After everything is put back together, you want to go for a test drive, a break-in drive. What that entails is getting the vehicle up to about 30 miles an hour and then coming to a good hard stop. Not locking up the brakes, but just a good solid uh, stop. Do that about four or five times and that burnishes the pads with the rotors uh, and gets everything mated together perfectly. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one. Put it in one of these prongs and pull out. And that's it. Maybe.